in continuation to, let's say, the story of the Spark service and the tea service, well, hey presto, you guys are just in time. They've released a new T5 system, which is going to run and be sold in conjunction and in parallel with the T4 system. Okay? Different workloads, different customers. Okay? So what's it look like? There's the chip. That's what it looks looks like. It's a nice small, you know, probably probably the size of a mobile phone. It's maybe half the size of let's say an iPhone 4S. Bit bit thinner. Okay. What's the features? I'm not going to go into it. You can check this out. Unfortunately, some of the material because the the product's going to be released. I think the, uh, the in and around March the 20th or so. There's not as much information out there because they're going to release the product with a lot of fanfare. This is our T5 system. Does everything, it's, it's even increased size, it's increased speed, single or multi-threaded, okay? System scalability up to eight, eight sockets, integrated I.O. It's doubling the I.O. bandwidth over T4, okay? Scalable. It's got very, very good power management. Dynamic, dynamic voltage frequency scaling. So if it sees that, let's say, the power is being utilized or under or not being utilized, for instance, at the weekend, the admin can go in, he's got a console, and he can say, OK, I know a Friday, 5 p.m., workload drops. The system, the chipset, does not have to run at full capacity, thus reducing electricity costs. So what's the differentiators? Higher frequency and more memory. It's called Generation 2 PCI. This is getting very technical now. So it's a true eight-way glue glass design. It's very technical. Probably something you're not going to talk to your customers about, OK? Higher RAS. New SP capabilities on ILOM, integrated lights out management. Better virtualization. There's improvements with Spark. So basically, this is more about the engineering the hardware and the software to work together. Better Solaris integration. Design objectives achieved. Oracle workloads, great for engineered systems. Remember, we were talking about the on chip crypto acceleration. Okay? Optimized systems. We're going to come to RAS later on in this slide deck. Multi multiply performance, advanced power management, scale efficiently. Scales to eight sockets, minimizes the latency. So we've doubled the core and the cache, balanced single threading and multiple threading throughput dynamically. So it scales elastically, OK? So this is all new. It's a new flagship. I'm going to have a look at, let's say, the product range. Very similar to the T4 product range, OK, especially to the entry level. So we've got a blade here. But you can see, let's say, it's 3.6 gigahertz here, which is probably, what, 20% higher than the T4, OK? Here, the threads are significantly higher again than, than, than the T4, OK? The, the, how many DIMMs, this is from onboard memory, you can get in. You can actually get increased, on, increased memory per server than you could have in the T4. Drive bays, here's the I.O. slots, and here's the form flat factor. So the, the entry level is it three RU? So it's three pizza boxes in the cabinet, OK? Rack. In the rack cabinet, yeah. Here we've got our T54, OK? LP, LP. Logical partitions, I think. Where are, we where are you seeing this? Low profile? Uh, sorry, low profile, yeah. Low profile, high profile. So basically, they've got slots for PCI cards and things like this. Low profile. No, 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 it's profile. It's LP. Yeah. Is it like the frequency of the I.O. port? The, 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 the no, 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 no. I, as far as I know, it's the size. It's the size. It's the size. So it's a card that sits into a slot. OK, like half height, full height. Exactly. Okay, like that. So basically, because of the innovations in technology over the years, they've, they, they can make the components smaller and smaller and smaller. OK? All are 10 gigs. Pardon? All are 10 gigs. Yeah. Because as, let's say, the components are coming out, it's, it's becoming more the standard. Whereas eight years ago, 10 years ago, it would have been one gig would have been the standard. So the next, let's say, jump in this is going to be what they call InfiniBand, which we will talk about when we compare Exadata and ODA. 
has infinity band LR on it. I can C4 support infinity, C4 dash 4 supports infinity band, not C4 dash 1 or 2. Okay. Yes, but it's what it's an infinity band card. Yes, it's a card. It's a card. It's not on board. This is on board. Okay, we'll, uh, there's diagrams of the machines. I'll point them out to you as we continue on. Right, okay? right, right. <coughs> now, one quick question for you. Why the SMJ is there? It just came to the right place. Uh, you were saying HP pushes a lot of Blade, and I've realized that. Why do customers go for Blade and versus Rack? Uh, rack goes like this, Blade goes like this. Is it just... Denser. It's denser. Basically, you can get more service into a blade machine as you can get into a into a into a rack, right? The so there's smaller components inside. The electricity flows parallel to it, so that means that one blade, one electricity, one the power input goes all out, mm -hmm. all the blades go off, right? Or I'm wrong. Um, it depends how it's configured and what sort of power uh, backup power utilities you have. Okay. In some respects, that can't happen. But it's for, for instance, with our blade machines, it's got redundant power supplies. So we would have two. Boat went, if the power goes, yes, your blade is, is dead in the water. Here okay. in a rack, you have 42 rack units. Yep. So I can have two rack unit servers. Yep. Like that. So that would probably make it two times 42 divided by 200 for Rocky. Uh, 21, 21 servers. Mm -hmm. In blade, I can probably have just 12. 12 or 24. 10. 10, 10, yes, 10. Yeah. But I think HP or Dell, ha HP has 12 blades. Right? That's, that's, that's why, remember we had the, com the competition, the, the HP, uh, HP are strong on blades because they have scalable blades in response. Uh, you, you hear what I'm saying? When you say scalable, that means other than the base capacity, yeah. there's an expansion capacity. But basically they, they, can, they, they provide different blade models to suit the market, okay? So, but we, let's say for instance, IBM, as far as I know, correct me if I'm wrong, but IBM do not su support blades for AIX. We pl provide blades for Solaris. Remember, this is a differentiator here. I don't think they do, and I don't think uh, HP UX runs. <laughs> I don't think HP UX does have blades for uh, for HP UX. I'm not sure. I don't know. That would be a very good differentiator. It would. I think it is one of the differentiators. Yeah. So here we have built-in RAID 01, hot pluggable disks, integrates with Sunblade 6000 network architecture. Okay. So for the blade, let's say, so when you're going blades, you do have to have specific chassis for them. Okay. Can they be mixed? X86 and uh, Spark mix, as in the older blade with a T5, can you mix an old new T5 with an older one? I don't know the answer to that question yet. You don't know? No. Um, Unfortunately. Are they of the similar size? Can the customer, if a customer has a legacy or an older Spark Sun Blade 6000 chassis, can he put the new, the new T5 into the ones or does he need to buy a new brand of chassis for that? I don't know the answer to that question either. Sorry, I don't know. I mean, this the, the, this 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 launch, this product launch, is not even hasn't happened yet. It's happening in maybe two weeks' time. So they gave us a training on this. I didn't want to training where they told us about the pricing models of T5. Okay. But they didn't tell us about much in too detail about these ones. You know how mm -hmm. we get fits into this or that or this. Like I mean, that. I can send you. I've got a let's say I took this this slide deck from sc it's screenshots of a uh, something that's out in education, <laughs> right? I made this myself. So it, it's just I, because we're doing T servers, you have to get you have to know about the T5 because it's coming out. So this is me kind of like a bit of a you know sticky uh, let's say cellar tape and um, glue sort of putting something together. So I was working on limited information for you so guys. The speed has improved. Yes. The we'll, the same. Yes. Okay. So um, so this this is the T5 too. <laughs> So it's got the hot swappable redundancy, bringing it's just let's say a further generation of let's say what we've been very good at doing for the pa in the past. Okay, right. This is what it looks like the front. This is getting really geeky for you now, technical. So here's your hot swappable discs. Press the button to come in, come out. Gives you status LED, red, yellow, or or green. I'm not exactly sure, but it tells you how the how the um, machine is operating. Okay. Fault LED, it'll start lighting up if something is wrong. Okay. RFID. USB, and if you need to plug in a monitor, other bits and pieces. Okay. <coughs> so that's what it looks like at the front, close up. Here's the back. Okay. Okay, so here's what it looks like at the back. See, remember we talked some about the 10 gigabit onboard Ethernet? This is the way it looks like at the back. Built in into Ethernet. So these are just like USB ports. No, these are for Ethernet connections. Ethernet. Yeah. So what's the USB is USB. Yeah, just yeah, next, to that, next to that. 
Next to that, the SP, it's just on the right. Yeah. So USB, it's a USB port. No, no, no. I, I mean, what's the difference between the SP network uh, and uh, the Ethernet, the serial 4GB port, network? Serial, or what is SP? serial port, yeah. But why would SP serial I, port? It's, serial it's just port? different options for different, let's say, interfaces. So I mean, I mean, is it, it doesn't look like a serial uh, pins. Like, for example, we used to say this is a serial. This is a yeah. network port. Yeah. So, What's the difference between the network port here? And I don't the know. Network, oh. I don't know. No. Something. So, new. in other words, I mean, yeah, that, that's like we're going to get the information. There's very little information on this, so no, you guys just going to. I mean, yeah. just out of the, you know? this thing does not matter. <coughs> I did this out of the goodness <laughs> of my heart for you guys, okay? <laughs> yeah, HP is connected to this. In this diagram, if I, I know I, we work on HP orders, I know HP connects the server to storage, but where does it come here? Which are the slots where to go in? The so storage. Yeah, storage. If you have to connect the storage to a server and use and host for Sarasa for that, where does that host for Sarasa fit in? In here. Oh. It can go in there. Oh. Yeah. So you have to have cards for or that. Or the network. Yeah, or else over the network. Yeah. Whichever way you want to do it. Okay, all right. Makes sense. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. That's the front of the T54. It's a big boy. Okay, powerful. Pretty much, it's just, so where we go, we've got an extrapolation of the same machine, it's just a bigger, 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 okay? So what we're talking about, we can grow them elastically. So we can add these together in data centers. It's got the hot pluggable disk, PCI cards, processor modules, <coughs> hot swap, redundant, Oracle ILAM service, integrated light set management. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think the T4 had 3.5 uh, inch also size, right? Yes. It did. And why were these different? Yeah, these are only 2.5. Okay, so that might be SSD drives as opposed to 15,000 RPM drives. Okay? Yes, these are 7,000 RPM. Okay, 7,000 RPM. Okay, so they're smaller. You can get more in. More of them okay. into the disk base, and you can have yeah. higher capacity. So, we're going to compare, let's say, the T44 to the T54. Okay? So, this is the difference. Okay, so it's the same size. Okay? So it's maybe 20% faster. <coughs> right. A lot more yeah. concurrent th threads. T5 comes as is. Okay, you might have some options to choose, choose the memory, whichever memory you want. However, currently that might change. Whereas opposed to the t difference between the T4 and the T5, is that you had options here, different processor speeds, different right. let's say HBAs. Yeah. This comes configured as is. Yeah. Okay. And Q1 meter, sir. T54 okay. is a pro and T. I mean, T54 is probably an equivalent to a T42 in pricing. It's okay. Cheap. It's pretty cheap. That's why they don't want to make it. You know, the way you configure it, yeah. you'll have nothing left to sell. Because basically, I think it's because they're they're pitching it at the price where literally they they want to just this is how we're going to produce it out the door, out the right. door, out the door. Okay. So we don't need to go into this. This we've seen it. We know that we, we've basically touched on some of these features. Um, these are th this is let's say what the new T5 looks like. Oh, T5 supports a dynamic domain name. Okay, and then we've got we've got another big even that's an, another step up the T58. Did they speak to you about the T58? Yes, they did. Yeah, and is that <laughs> is the T58 not going to be a configurable box no, out the door? Every T5 is half populated, full populated. Okay. I mean half. In terms of the memory limb, okay. and you take the superior one, you, it's a big one. So they showed comparisons of overlap between T4 and T5. Okay, okay. So this is what the T5 8 looks like. It's a bigger machine again. It's more powerful. Next thing. Securing all the stack layers. So here what we're talking about is the on-chip on uh, crypto acceleration for the encryption, okay? And this is basically for turning SSL layer right through to the web layer, right through to the database <coughs> layer, right through to the chip layer, okay? So basically this is a, a diagram designed to, let's say, show you how the on-chip encryption works. How they've, let's say, how the way they've, they've covered security from start to finish within the new T5 system, okay? So the, even the table spaces on the database have been encrypted now, okay? <coughs> This would be, let's say, an, an example of where en the engineered system is working together. So, open SSL, Java encryption, the ZFS file system, the WebLogic SSL, they're all working together. 
to make it a secure machine. So here, here we have some of the, let's say, comparison between, let's say, IBM and our T5 systems and T4, T5 systems and our M5 systems and how we stack up. Remember, my personal opinion on the T5 system is we're going after the P7 series from IBM. IBM with AIX, T5 <coughs> with Solaris 11. That's the, the sweet spot for this, okay? They're going after IBM because that's, IBM's been, it's been winning in this market for too long, okay? For their P7 middle enterprise level um, customers, enterprise level applications, okay? So here's the, here's the competition. What does IBM bring to the table? What do we bring to the table? Now this slide really speaks for itself. How does, and how does, let's say, Wind, Intel, Sandy Bridge, is HP, is that gonna be the next HP UX release? Who knows? But the, the, we put this in, the Intel comparison, just to have three for comparison, okay? Virtualization support? Question mark. Okay, D does it have it inbuilt for free? No, absolutely not. If you want LPAR, you have to pay, you have to pay for a license for this. So that's why they've got this question mark in here. How do they deal with that? Okay. But let's say some of this, this stuff here is, let's say, is licensable, licensable okay, with IBM. Okay. With ours, with ours, you get the full kit and caboodle for free. Starting with Oracle Solaris 10, and obviously integrated with Solaris 11, we had, let's say, the capability of so-called critical thread declared by software. So basically what this is, is that the, the administrator can go down to the, the chip level now and tell the software what applications take precedence over other applications, which is really, really good. It's, it's really granular. Yes. It's like a priority scheduler. It says, okay, if this is running, I want to reduce this other processor, <coughs> give this more threads. There's nobody else who can do this, which is, it's really, really good technology. So what's the value of this? Not overcommitted. Doesn't give you, t as it's sometimes another way of saying it, oh, as more runnable threads than available CPUs to, 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 car to take care of it. So basically, it's a way of let's say dynamic, dynamically allocating resources within the th within the chip. Busy slide that, not mine. So it's a critical. So this where why is this? Where's where's it? Okay, for databases. So it's going to improve the database efficiency by thirty percent. Current status. So what's the story about Java? Twice the, <coughs> twice the improvement for application startups. So you're starting an application. You know when you turn on your phone, you turn on a Java application here, okay? For coherence, 20%. Some of this is very, very technical. So it's probably just suffice for you guys to know that this is out there because if you need to have these discussions, you obviously should be engaging your pre-sales people. And let them talk the real, getting your hands dirty tech stuff with your customer. And always remember, don't forget the pre-sales. <laughs> because they will help, because sometimes they will, let's say, discover opportunities. And it's just, it's always good to have a second set of eyes on something. Yeah. Now this is, let's say, where we're getting uh, quite... <laughs> I mightn't be able to answer it though. Yeah, coherence, <laughs> you said coherence. Mm -hmm. uh, is it the coherence at application server level? Right. What we have the same product as Oracle Coherence, which is you know for caching. Yes. Is this the same at a hardware level? The coherence. I I. I inverse, like I'm, I'm not sure. I'm just trying to understand. I I don't know. It's the connection between the database and the hardware. How it relates to the. Um, uh, we have in-memory database cache, right? And we have uh, cache, L1 cache. Cache, we have cache memory for that. We have cache. But what is this coherence exactly? Is it like 
the same functionality, what is that application server level also use that to hear for yeah. coherence? Coherence is, I think, is for applications. Yeah. I think it's for, I think it's between the application layer and the database layer. So, if okay. customers buy this hardware, they don't really have the current coherence of caching problems at all? Um, I don't know. And I you had, to, you had to try to uh, something to do with the, with the network, the connection between the yeah. routers. Yeah. This packet writer. Well, yeah, but I mean, it's it's still it's still it's uh, if it's even if it's within the application um, or could be. Yeah. So some kind of customization between the operating system hardware and the other side of operating system and hardware. Just my guess. Yeah. Uh, guys, guys, we're just going to have to wait until it comes out because I, I don't know the answer to these questions. I don't think I'm going to be able to find them. Okay. Unfortunately. Um, I do have actually all the, all the screenshots so we can go back and have a look after this. Um, um, because I didn't take all the screenshots down because some of them were really, really heavy going technically. So this is another technical, um, technical. it's called glueless one-hop scaling in th within the sockets. My understanding of this is that well, the way the socket used to work prior to this is that it would have gone like this or like this when connecting. Now they can connect through different it's paths, so it's less time. We're talking nanoseconds, less than nanoseconds here, okay? Striped across all processors. Stored on chip SRAM, okay? So it's 50% more effective bandwidth than comparable, let's say, chip technology, okay? RAS, reliability, availability, serviceability. So what's the definition of a RAS? We've heard about RAS all day. Maybe I should have defined it earlier on, but I assumed everybody understood what RAS meant. We had a discussion already about hot <coughs> plug. We had a discussion already about hot service. A discuss discussion already about hot swap. So obviously the hot plug refers to the fact that a component can be plugged or unplugged without powering down the machine, okay? Hot service. So it's the, it's the idea that we're able to perform hot plug operations. So therefore the features of N-series and D-series. Yes. Exactly. And remove the excess abuse. And hot service sometimes means you'd have to you need some operator intervention also. Okay. So the system also will automatically, let's say for instance, another serviceability <coughs> issue with that or let's say serviceability function, it will tell the user when it's safe to remove some of the components. So a good example would be some of the PCI Express modules. You can swap them in, swap them out. System will tell you, yeah, swap it out now. Okay. Now we talked about hot swap already. You walk up to a box, take something out, replace it, and you're done. Okay. And let's say there's no system downtime. Typical example of this would be RAID disks or power supplies because they're all redundant. Okay. Ooh. It's concept, yeah. It's a concept which is uh, associated, with associated only with Oracle. I think it's an industry. It's an industry concept, okay? Because IBM would have hot swappable components, so would HP, okay? What is Same thing. It's RAS. It's not a. I don't think it's a term unique to to Oracle, okay? Now here's let's say a good oh well a big overview of how. The virtualization works, the Solaris, and the better utilization, the better, more efficient data center you're going to get when you, let's say, implement, for instance, and buy, let's say, T5 technology. Don't really need to go into it. Suffice to say, you know, you can, let's say, on one machine, you can, uh, within one Solaris zone, for instance, oh, sorry, let's just stop that and go back. What went before, for instance, when we're talking about the backwards compatibility, you see here we've got Solaris 8 zone, Solaris 9 zone, Solaris zone, Solaris zone. So basically, with, let's say we have our, oh, we wrote applications <coughs> way back for a database 
on Solaris 9. We don't want to lose that because we still use it. This is the container. Yes, this is the way it looks. Oh, we've got Solaris 8 applications with WebLogic. We want to keep going, okay? We want to keep functioning. We don't want to recompile these applications, but they're critical to our mission because they're doing what they're supposed to do. We don't need to recreate the wheel, but we want to upgrade our hardware because the hardware is six, seven, eight, nine years old. How do we do it? This is the way you do it, okay? And somebody put in, let's say, how it would work. How does it look with T5? Remember what a hypervisor is. This is a virtualization term, guys, yeah? You understand what a hypervisor is? So for instance, we can, we can run SAP here in a virtualized manner. Oracle database. I think we've got WebLogic floating around in here as well. OK? So many things. Everyone is a separate machine. Yes, separate machines, but one box. You know, I, I sometimes analogize, let's say, what virtualization looks like. Maybe this is what we do to finish up today. We'll actually do a virtualization. So leading into this, I'll just go into a bit more virtualization. But if we would, let's say, some people, how, do you, how does it work? How does virtualization work? Well, let's say you all went to university. You all used a library, OK? Remember using a library at university? You go in, you get your book. But what is the library actually functioning as? It's functioning as an entity where, let's say, a lot of concurrent different things are happening simultaneously. So you could have somebody in one room checking out the registrar of electors, somebody else in another room online looking at videos, somebody else in another room reading a book. It's a library. Okay? So some people said, how, would you, how, do you, like, how does virtualization work? Well, let's say you have children and you want to introduce them the concept of a library. Well, what would you do? How would you do that? Well, maybe what you do is you set up a children's library within that library, OK? Now, that children's library could have, let's say, an entirely different, let's say, function within the library, but it's still a library, within a library, OK? So for instance, they might have color-coded entry cards. They can access coloring books. They can, let's say, you could have, let's say, whereas in your regular library, you're, let's say, indexing books alphabetically. In the children's library, the books are in indexed on the color code, OK? So that's my idea of, let's say, how, you, how do you get your head around virtualization? What does it mean? And what I'll do is, let's say, this will, let's say, roll into, let's say, what is virtualization? How does it work? What does virtual box le look like? This is, let's say, the Spark technology. We've got x86 technology. So we've got different virtualization options for, what, for different um, needs, different customer utilization, OK? What's the other beauty? Live migrations, OK? So you can have a system up and running, people on it. You can move between zones, between virtual areas. And I've seen it actually where somebody migrated on a T4 a video. The video didn't lose a clip, which was quite surprising. So you move from one domain to another live, and it didn't skip a beat, the video clip. So it's that good, this technology. Which, when you think of disaster recovery scenarios, is a very, very useful technology. Or let's say high availability. I want my machines always up, even though they're in a virtual zone. Oh, we've got, we know we've got to switch out a hard drive. OK, we just move it to this domain here. OK? And that's pretty much it for the Spark T5.